It's a, a, good morning, oh, did, Chief I, did I pronounce the same name incorrectly? Is it Ripley or Ripley? Riley. It's Riley. Riley. Why do I get the, the P from now? I'm sorry. Mr. Riley. Um, you hold BURIS and LLB degrees. That's correct, Chief Justice. From uh, which university? Uh, Western Cape. <coughs> and um, you were a public prosecutor between 1983 and 1987? Yes, in that period. And the magistrate for only one year? Yes, uh, uh, sort of adv advanced over to the magistrate, yes. Yes. And you've been an attorney for about 15 years now. Is that correct or am I mistaken? I think it's a bit longer. I beg your pardon? I think it's a bit longer, Chief Justice. Is it a bit long? How long have you been a magistrate for? Because I know <laughs> subsequently you became a regional court magistrate. So, so now I, I, I sort of was asked to do uh, acting work as oh, a regional yes. magistrate. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. So for how long have you been an attorney? Uh, certainly, I think it's more than 20 years, I think. I thought it was from 1991 to 2016. That gives us how long? More than 20 years? Yes. It, I, it, yes. It no, you're quite years. right. My calculation is wrong. And you've acted for a, uh, you've acted as a judge for for how long exactly? I couldn't work it out. It seems to be for about two years, but I wasn't sure whether you've been acting continuously from 2014 until now, or whether you would uh, pick up a, a term <coughs> here and there. I acted uh, during 2007 for the first time. Okay. Uh, that, I think, was one term, and then in 2010, I think, was another term. Well, just give me a, a estimate the period. I think all in all, approximately a year and a half. A year and a half. Did you enjoy it? It's extremely challenging. A huge learning experience. Reserve judgments? Yes, I do have, and, unfortunately. Uh, <laughs> well, o o over, over the period you acted there, what is the longest you've ever taken to deliver a judgment, a reserve judgment? I think I, it, it could, I, I must confess, it could be about six months. And I think the reason for that is not proper planning okay. and uh, prioritizing matters. And uh, I think with the workflow and the pressure, it's very easy to sort of get caught up in uh, keeping, keeping a matter longer than you should. And how, how, how far back uh, was that? Uh, the, which the judge, year, during the, which year? The, this, this was in, in, my, in my recent, uh, in 2015, I picked up a matter. Mm -hmm. And I handed down that judgment uh, in, in the first term now. 20, since 2013? No, 2015, uh, Chief oh, Justice. Oh, 2015. Yeah. Is that the only matter where you kept a judgment reserved for that long? Uh, there was another matter, but that judgment has also been handed down. How long did you keep it uh, reserved for? Could have been four months or so. Yes. I know that the norms and standards say that you shouldn't have a judgment outstanding for longer. Yeah. That, well, that's, that's designed... Uh, <laughs> That's designed to make sure that you don't get to eight months. Yes, because I, if you get to eight months, then you'll come before this body. Yes, I, I, I think that uh, certainly from the uh, judge president's point of view, uh, is certainly committed to seeing that judges don't have uh, judgments outstanding for too long. But yeah. the problem is that sometimes because of circumstances, uh, uh, things unfortunately get out of hand sometimes, and then you have to do play, play catch up. Now there is there are exceptions. We do have exceptions at the constitutional court as well. Very well, uh, Deputy Judge President Traveso. Yes, Mr. Riley, um, you when you previously acted in the High Court, were there then any?
judgments of yours that were outstanding for a long time. Yes, I, I will say that there were judgments outstanding, and the simple reason for that is that in the one instance, I was allocated uh, uh, quite a substantial application. I think it's one of the judgments I refer to here. I think it's the Sinmark judgment. And uh, the difficulty, of course, having the kind of practice that I have is that <coughs> it results in a situation that once you're back in practice and you start working and you become completely overwhelmed by what you're supposed to be doing, the effect of that was that that judgment uh, was outstanding for, uh, for some time. How long was that? I must confess, I can't tell you offhand. I'm, you might have made a note of it. I, I don't no, know. I didn't make a note of it. I'm asking you. No, I, I, I can't say offhand, uh, but it was very difficult because what I've realized is that you can't, you can't do acting work as a judge <coughs> and at the same time run a practice. It's impossible. No, no please, how, how long did it take? Because that's crucial. And you've got to be clear in your answer here. How long did you keep it reserved for? Well, I must, I must Estimate. I'm sitting here. Well, if you ask me of any matter, I'll tell you. I'll, keep, I'll be able to estimate that any matter that affects me. Uh, it could have been eight months. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. Mm. Yes, Mr. Riley. Um, sorry, Mr. Chief Justice. Can I continue? Please. Um, Mr. Riley, I didn't make a note of it, and obviously my memory is not perfect in every respect. But if I recall, we, when I say we, I'm talking about Judge Schlorpe and myself, had to go to great lengths to get you to write that judgment. Would I be unfair to say that? It's, it's, uh, it's, it was, f from my point of view, basically a situation of time, making time. Making time in, in, a, in a busy practice where, where you're the sole sort of practically the main fee earner in the practice. So it, 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 it was difficult. One last question. Um, Mr. Riley, when you are allocated matters, do you try and complete them in the guesstimated time that the case will last, or do your cases generally run over? I don't think they generally run over. I think that uh, in exceptional situations, it does happen that a matter does uh, get postponed for whatever reasonable uh, reason they may exist. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, Deputy Judge President. Ms. Stewart. Thank you, Chief Justice. Um, Mr. Riley, at uh, paragraph 6.2 of your questionnaire, they, you, you mentioned that 60 to 70 percent of your work is criminal law, and when you were asked about constitutional law, you said that falls under your criminal law practice, which I understand. Um, and I note that you do say that you have run motion court in the Cape, which is obviously a long list of matters, but do you think you've had enough experience in respect of the other fields of law, given that on your own version, 70% of your practice is litigation, is criminal, and that incorporates under it constitutional law? Have you been exposed to a number of other areas of law on the bench? I, I have in practice. Uh, the practice, uh, because of my background as a prosecutor and a magistrate, uh, almost automatically sort of developed into me doing much more criminal practice work. Um, however, at the same time, uh, it wasn't exclusively uh, restricted to criminal practice work, and over a period of years up until now, the practice is... Uh, sort of developed into a general practice. So I have had exposure to, uh, to a lot of other work. In, in, in when I came to the High Court, uh, I must confess that uh, uh, I was probably then exposed to uh, a much wider spectrum of civil practice work. Uh, 
And uh, from, I think, what I've noted in the questionnaire on page 15, uh, I have indeed uh, uh, been exposed to uh, company law, uh, I think, a very diverse uh, spectrum of work. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Uh, Commissioner Fori. Thank you, Chief Justice. Morning, Mr. Riley. Morning, sir. Uh, did I hear you saying, and please correct me if I'm wrong, uh, saying that it's difficult to be an acting judge and run a practice at the same time? Did you actually say that? What, what, I, uh, what I meant to say is that no, I've come to the conclusion sorry, that... Sorry, did, did I understand you correctly that uh, you said that? Yes, it's difficult, extremely difficult. Okay. Did you say it's difficult to be an acting judge and run a practice at the same time? Yes or no? Yes, I, I, if, if I put it no, in no, perspective... No, yes or no. Just, no, just, but you... you no, no, you, you can... I'm sorry, you have to allow me the opportunity to explain. No, you can explain. please. I'm, I'm just answering... It's a simple question. If you need an opportunity to clarify after he would have exhausted these questions, you'll be afforded the opportunity. Yes. Just Thank be you. direct, sir. Thank you. Uh, did you say that, yes or no? Yes, I did. Are you supposed to run a practice whilst no, you're acting as a judge? No, I wasn't. Maybe I, uh, this is exactly what I was trying to explain to you. No, don't anticipate my questions, no, Mr. I, 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 You are not supposed to, and I have not been involved in my practice for all this period of time. Okay, and you say that all in all you've been acting for about a year and a half. Yes, I have. You're a sole practitioner. What no, I, 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 I have uh, four or five other attorneys. Uh, You're the only director of the firm. That is correct, sir. Okay. I, I have another what director. What happened? Sorry, I have another director. Can I just ask the questions and yes, then you just answer them? And if you think you need to elaborate, you can do so. And if I think you need to elaborate, I will ask you. Are you the sole proprietor of the firm or aren't you? I am. Now, in that year and a half, what happened to the practice? The practice continued. But in which way? Uh, as I've indicated now, I have... Uh I have a co-director, and I have uh, four other attorneys uh, in the practice. Thank you, Chief Justice. You're saying now, what about then? S s sorry, Chief Justice. You're saying now I have... Uh, no, I have had, sorry, Chief Justice. I've always, I've always had... Where did the difficulty arise <laughs> from while you were acting now in relation to both running the practice and uh, acting as a judge? I, I think the difficulty is in in the sense of uh, being able to, shall I say, focus uh, on practice and at the same time try to focus on writing outstanding judgments. Because I don't understand. You are, if you have nothing to do with practice while you are acting, how does running practice make it difficult for you to fulfill your role as an acting judge? I think there are certain decisions that has to be made and certain uh, uh, decisions relating to the practice management that necessarily sometimes requires one to give input. Oh, so while acting you were giving input to practice? I, when I say input to practice, I say input to decisions that have to be made in relation to particular aspects, uh, uh, I suppose, insofar as uh, uh, a particular problem that, that, uh, that uh, we had was in relation to the premises that, uh, that our offices are housed in. Sir, acting cannot be affected by looking for office accommodation. What is it about practice that made it difficult for you to fulfill your role as acting judge as a result of which judgments had to be delayed for this long? Look, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult for me to explain. Uh, it's difficult. All right. Commissioner Helens? Uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Riley. 
Um, could you describe to us uh, what the essential wrong or evil is in an excessively delayed judgment? What are the consequences? What, is the, what does it mean? I, I think that it speaks to the fact that uh, litigants are entitled to uh, know and hear the outcome of the matter as soon as possible. Is that all? Uh, I, I think that uh, the idea also is that uh, uh, justice, I suppose, should be dispensed uh, as expeditiously as possible. Let me cut to the chase here. When you have a trial or a motion matter, the freshness of the argument, uh, the demeanor of a witness, the uh, reaction of a witness to a version put in cross-examination, all the warp and woof and the heart of either a motion or a trial, when you adjourn after the hearing, it's all fresh in your mind. How is it possible to maintain that freshness, to understand your notes, to understand the case you heard, when you write the judgment eight months later? It's cold ash in your mouth. You can't remember the case. Well. Well, you did, you did correctly point out that one does have notes and one does uh, make uh, annotations about uh, the demeanor of witnesses. Uh, 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 and, uh, and then on that basis, one is able to uh, then address the issues. Uh, I, I agree with you uh, that, that uh, it is a difficult thing to uh, later on uh, sit down and, and write a judgment. And, and for that reason, uh, the criticism is, is valid in the sense that uh, one ought to, one must uh, write uh, a judgment as soon as, 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 as is reasonably possible. Mr. Mr. Riley, one of your continuing themes, and I don't want to badger you here, but you say it's difficult, it's difficult, it's difficult. This is not an easy job you're applying for. It's a difficult job, and you found a difficult job difficult. It's supposed to be difficult. I agree with you. You are excused, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chief Justice.